Good afternoon, friends, colleagues, comrades. My name is Graham Smith and I'm the chair of Unison's National Young Members Forum. And I'm one of the many students here today that's came from Edinburgh University Occupation. And we are still fighting these cuts. For Alice School, I was lucky enough to win a place as a youth work apprentice. But if I left school this year, I don't. I know I wouldn't have the same chance. That's wrong. If I left school this year, what might my future look like? I'll tell you. There's a one in five chance that I would end up on the dole. <laughs> and as we saw the last time we had a Tory government, we know that these young people and in unemployment will likely to stay there for the rest of their lives. This is a blatant waste of potential. They'll be joining the million other young people in this country that have been left behind by this recession. The last time we saw this many young people out of work, it was in 1992, under the Tories. This time, it's 16 and 17 year olds who have been hit hardest. We saw a massive jump to 200,000 16 and 17 year olds out of work last quarter. How does that contribute to growth? Well then, what does the government plan to do to get them into work? It will force massive cuts upon our connection services. Unison members there are facing up to 33% cuts and also the wholesale scrappage of connections in some areas. Unison wants the government to propose a credible plan because what they have put forward is nowhere near enough to help those young people. We know that these Cinderella services, like connections, have been neglected and they need the resources to properly flourish and they're being hit hardest by these regressive cuts. Where is the responsibility to young people there? The previous Labour government, they introduced the Future Jobs Fund, which was the most progressive employment programme for a generation. Now to be clear, this is not a compliment as it was far from perfect. But the Future Job Fund, for all its faults, was a damn sight better than what we have now. Nothing. <laughs> Employers want young people that have done a real job, like the chance the Future Jobs Fund gave them. Not just unpaid work experience, which simply takes advantage. Where will the young people get that opportunity now? Talking about opportunities, what about the school and college students who have been denied the support that they need through the removal of the EMA? We know that too many young people out there are struggling to stay in education because of it. They're struggling to pay for books, travel and the cost of living. How is that justified? They're taking away the opportunity from those young people to benefit from a quality education combined with the financial support that they need. The condemns have clearly set out to attack young people. Now, it's at this point I was told to put a joke in my speech. So here it is. Michael Gove. The attack on EMA was horrendous. They are leaving so many young people out in the cold. But on top of that, we have seen a threefold hike in tuition fees. Boo. The vibrant student movement which has emerged from this, from hibernation, from decades of sitting back, has now been a huge inspiration to trade unionists, affirming that we are not alone in the belief that there is an alternative to these regressive cuts. The young people, students and trade unionists who are showing hashtag solidarity here today and in London, these I'll show that this movement will not be easily defeated. Others today will speak about that movement, but I have one contribution to make, and it is this. The trade union movement, Labour Party, and especially the NUS, must be much more responsive to this movement which has developed from this attack. We can't afford to divide ourselves as the left has in Britain for decades through sectarian disputes and everything else. In Edinburgh, I've seen people from all different ideologies coming together in the united aim of defeating these cuts. The reason for their activism, 
that every Lib Dem MP and candidate promised us. They promised us that they would fight against cuts. No, they didn't. They promised us that they would fight for a fairer alternative and they would oppose cuts. Where is that now? They now try and justif justify their capitulation to the ultra-right and the Tory party by proclaiming that the hikes and fees and the resulting personal debt is somehow more progressive and somehow young people will be better off at the end. The word for that is bullshit. Clegg <laughs> lied to us, trying to paint himself as a more progressive alternative to New Labour. It wasn't that hard, to be honest, and his manifesto backed it up. But as we all know, coalition is the ideal excuse to get rid of any policies that are popular. The thing is though, Cameron and Clegg didn't have to work too hard to build a veneer of unity between their ideologies. And I hate to correct the thousands of other students that have stood beside on the streets of Edinburgh and London, but the chant that we've been singing is wrong. Nick Clegg did not turn blue. He already was. <laughs> the veneer of unity between those coalition parties is already cracked. And we know that it only takes a recording of a constituency surgery to make that happen. We know that we need to organise in our workplaces, in our colleges, universities, schools, communities and amongst our friends to defeat these horrendous cuts. Organise, organise, organise. <laughs> people are angry out there at these cuts. We are the people that we know are back home are. Now, we have not been good enough in the past at bringing other people into our movement and focusing their anger. We need to reach out to those outside our normal targets, outside our comfort zones. We need to work with our trades councils and our universities, colleges to form anti-cuts alliances that locally that will join in with national action. These alliances are how we will defeat these condemned cuts. These alliances are how we will build strong community links that last. These alliances are how we will show the huge amount of public anger out in the streets on the 26th of March. Now, get involved with your local action and I'm sure I'll see you in the streets. Thank you for listening and change the world. Yeah.